Hey guys, it's Chili here. Welcome back to STD Gems. In the last episode, we uh, we looked at four each and four each n. Uh, we kind of stepped out of our safe space in the modifying sequence operations. We stepped into a different uh, group, the non-modifying sequence operations, because you know, four each, four, they definitely don't modify. This doesn't make any sense. Who named this bullshit? Who categorized this bullshit? Anyways. So, since we've stepped into this category here, I figure, well, let's just polish off the whole category. And we're going to start today with the uh, these of guys here, eh, all of, any of, none of, and the count boys. So, look at these guys. They kind of have something in common. Uh, it's going to be a short video because it's not that complicated, but that's a good thing. These guys are very useful. They're very simple. We like that. So, let's just jump right in there. Count. You've seen me use this guy before, you've seen me use this guy in gems, and it's not that difficult. You just count the number of uh, elements in a container, or in a, a range, that match some condition. So let's look at this one here, I've got a uh, container A, and I'm going to count all of the twos using std count in the container. You run that, and you see that there are indeed two twos. One. Ah, 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 two, ah, 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 two twos. There you go. Beautiful. Now, what if I wanted to count something a little more complex? Let's say I want to count all the numbers that are less than or equal to three. Well, then all I'm going to do is replace my value with a predicate here, a unary predicate, and change this from count to count if. And if I run this guy, I should see that there are indeed four, right? There's one one, there's two twos, and there's one three. That makes four. Simple, beautiful. Runs over the entire range, counts all the things that match the condition. Moving on, we've got the of bros here. All of, any of, none of. And they're all basically, they do the same, same shit, different pile. So it's pretty easy to, uh, to learn them all. All you do is you give them a predicate, you give them a range, just like count. But instead of giving you the count of things that match, they tell you whether, well, for example, uh, let's see here. All of will return true if all the elements match. Any of will return true if at least one of the elements match. None of will return true if none of the elements match. And that's it. It's super simple. Uh, so, let's give it a shot. So here I'm calling any of, and again, going over A, and again, the predicate is going to be, you know, less than or equal to three. So are any of the elements of A less than or equal to three? I'm just doing bool alpha here, outputting that so that it gives me a nice, uh, Nice string output, true and false here. True and false instead of zero and one. And true, yeah, of course. Of course we have at least one number that is less than or equal to three. But do we have any numbers that are greater than 69? Tell me this, because I, I am dying to know. False, we do not have any of those. And there you go. But if we change this to none of, now we're asking are none of them greater than 69? And that is of course true. None of them are greater than 69. It's, it's pretty, Gosh darn simple. Now I use these uh, of guys, I use them all the time because it's it's very useful. Remember the poo game? Remember the condition for winning the poo game? Poo game is won when you've collected all the poos. So you would, cause you could just run an all of over your container of poos and that would be your condition to check if you won the game. All right, so let's take a look at a little more gamey example here. I've got a class enemy. It has HP. You can set its initial HP. You can reduce its HP, and you can check to see if it's dead, which is HP less than or equal to zero. I create a vector of two enemies, give them 69 HP, and then I'm just running over, checking to see if any of, all of, or none of them are dead. And I'm doing that here, the predicate, I'm using std member function to adapt a member function that takes zero parameters and returns a bool to a functor that takes one parameter, an enemy, and returns a bool. So here you can use this to adapt uh, simple member functions to predicates that you can use in your algorithms. It's a neat, neat little thing I like to do sometimes. And I'm just going to run that. I'm going to kill one. I'm going to run it again. I'm going to kill one. And I'm going to run it again. Uh, I should probably hit the other one for this one. Save that. Run it. So we see to start off with they're all alive. So false false, none are dead is true, right? Because they're all alive. Then we kill one, any are dead becomes true, but they're not all dead, and 
it's still one of them is alive, so none are dead is false. And then I kill the other one, any are dead is true, all are dead is true, none are dead becomes false. That's the basic idea. Now there's one last interesting property that I want to just bring your attention to about the, uh, the of bros. And that is that they are, they're lazy or they're quick return. So let's say we're running over a container, we're going to use any of, we're running over a container of enemies. And we want to check to see if any of them are dead. Let's say the container has a million enemies. Uh, so if I find, if I look at the first enemy and I see it's dead, do I need to check all the other enemies? No, because any of is already satisfied. As long as one is dead, we know we're going to return true. We don't need to check all the other enemies in the container. So it just returns right away. It returns any of will return true as soon as it finds one uh, element that matches the predicate. Uh, similarly, none of will return false as soon as it finds one element that matches the predicate. And all of will return false as soon as it finds an element that doesn't match the predicate. So they're quick return. And this can have uh, an effect on what you choose. So when I did the, uh, the video on remove for the predicate here, I did std count, and I counted the number of e's and checked to see if that was equal to zero. So that means you have to run over the entire string and count how many e's. You have to check to count the number of e's. You can't early return because you can't. Uh, there might be more e's after you find the first one or after you find the second one. You have to check every single character. So what? But for this one, for this algorithm here, we don't want to know the number. We just want to know if there are any E's in that guy. So you, for this one, you could use count. It's very simple, and I, I used it because it was simple and self-evident, and I hadn't covered count yet, uh, or any of or all of. But um, what you would really want to do here is you'd want to replace that count with a none of. Because what were we doing here? We're checking to see... We want to remove words that have no e's. So we want to check to see if none of the characters is equal to e. And if we do it this way, then we have a quick return and uh, we don't have to check every single letter in the word. Instead, we use std none of because what are we doing here? We're removing all of the strings that have no e's. That's all of the strings where none of the characters are equal to e. And doing it this way means it's going to return early. Oh, we gotta... I don't think we need this here. And instead we use std none of, because what are, we, what are we really doing here? We're removing all the strings that have no e's. That's all the strings where none of the characters are equal to e. So std none of matches this perfectly, and it has the extra benefit of not needing to check all of the characters. As soon as it hits one E, it can return early and say, no, nah, this guy doesn't match. This guy has an E. So we return false. Uh, let's just see the little long. We're just gonna put that stuff on its own line. But yeah, so std none of, this is what we really should have used for this thing. But I decided to use count because it, it was easier to understand at the time and I haven't hadn't introduced the of bros yet. Yeah, if you run it, you get the same result only the uh, the strings with E remain in the uh, container. That's gonna about do it for this video. We covered the count bros and we covered the of bros and they're not complicated, they're very useful, they're just great functions to add to your toolkit. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please click the like button, it helps a lot and I will see you soon with some more STD gems. Mm -hmm.